The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello and welcome to the Ben Heck Shopping Channel, or BHSC for short. Today we have a very exclusive offer for you. That's right, Allison. The new Super Great Glue Gun 9000X, the latest in glue gun technology. You won't believe what this puppy can do. What makes it so great? This is the world's first glue gun that has automatic extrusion, anti-drip measures, and you can control the speed using a handy analog trigger with no mechanical moving parts. Boy, I think I'm going to have to see that to believe it. Well, first, before we show you this marvel of modern science, we're going to go over the steps it took to create it and then do the big reveal. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. In the previous episode, we found out how we could make a glue gun extrude using a DC gear motor and a pinch lever. We also made electronics to control it. In this episode, we're going to put everything together. I've got the extrusion assembly printing right now, and I'll also have some wooden pieces that will attach to it so the plastic doesn't melt. In the meantime, I'm working on the trigger assembly. I thought about making my own trigger, and then I realized it's a lot faster just to use an existing one. So here's an Xbox 360 trigger, just like the one we were testing with, but I've removed the potentiometer and I just have the trigger in the spring to save space. And to sense it, we're gonna use a Hall Effect sensor, which is basically a little integrated circuit that you give uh, voltage, ground, and then its output is basically an analog voltage from ground to the control voltage. That tells you how close the magnetic field is. There's a rare earth magnet here, and as you pull the trigger, the magnet gets closer to the Hall Effect sensor, which will give us an analog reading. I'm gonna hook up this Hall Effect sensor to this header here, then use this Arduino to figure out what the new values are gonna be. We wrote the code for the old one using a potentiometer, so we have to figure out what the new baseline is. But once we do, it's not a big deal to change the code over. So we'll mount the Hall Effect sensor here, and then as the magnet gets closer to it, it will change its output. The Hall Effect sensor's uh, baseline value is about halfway. It's, it's in this case 2.5 volts. Depends on which direction you apply the magnetic field. It'll either go closer to five or closer to zero. We'll mount it, then we'll get a accurate range of numbers, and then we can use that to change how our control works. So it'll work just like the potentiometer. We have our new version of the mounting system, 3D printed, and uh, hopefully it won't melt like this earlier prototype did. Turns out they use a special kind of glass infused high temperature ABS when they actually make a glue gun. So we're gonna use wood to insulate ours. So the idea here is the hot glue portion inserts into this assembly right there. Looks good. Then, we're going to put these spacers on the front and it will lock the glue gun in place basically with, you know, mechanical retention and these screws will attach into the plastic pill block here. So I'll just do that. Hopefully everything basically fits. This goes to the thermal couple so we know what temperature the glue gun is, it won't let you extrude, it won't run the motor unless the glue gun is up to temperature. That is in there pretty good, I do not think that is going to come out. This is the new arm that I printed. Has a little better opening for the glue stick, the bearing's still pretty much the same. And it's gonna go right there. And you shouldn't actually have to remove the arm, you should be able to put the glue sticks in one right after the other, but if you have to remove the arm, you can pull it this way, there's gonna be a tension spring right here. So I will start doing that as well. There's a spacer here, okay. And that goes there. Then we're gonna drive a size six screw up from the bottom. Oh, I just stabbed myself. Oh, no blood, that's good. No blood, no problem. All right. 
and the motor. There's an opening here so we can get it to set screw on the toothed gear. So I want to turn the motor with its flat end of the shaft toward that opening just so it's one less thing to muck us up in a bit. The half ways of making you talk, glue gun. Okay, now I'm gonna put this toothed gear. This gear actually, you can get these from a website called SDPSI, which sells a lot of mechanical things like gears and bushings. And this is actually pretty much the same thing that's used in the MakerBot replicator. Um, and it works on the glue stick, so I had an extra one of these laying around, so I'm just gonna use it. I've also added mounting holes here for our trigger, trigger assembly and the rest of the glue gun. It's actually starting to look like a gun now. Okay, now I have to attach the spring screw here. Now how that's working is you're gonna have this, uh, there we go. That's just a regular uh, screw. But on this side, we're going to have a washer a spring. This is kind of the tricky part. I compress on another washer and the lock nut. And what this spring is gonna do is it's going to pull the red lock arm as tightly as possible against the drive wheel. Okay, there we go. So let's use this, no, actually that one's not gonna work. We're gonna use this guy and this guy. And then this lock nut, also sometimes it's called a stop nut. We just want to go just until we see the screw come out the end, all right? So that's going to apply a lot of pressure right here. This is being pulled over. When you put the screw in, it'll, I'm sorry, when you put the glue stick in, it'll open it up just a little bit. But as you can see, it's got quite a bit of pressure in there. Basically, we're pulling it as tight as possible. Uh, I think we're ready for a demonstration. Now it's time for a tech timeout. Let's take a break to talk about thermistors. Thermistor is a resistor that changes its resistance based off temperature. We're using one in our hot glue gun to tell us when the tip of the glue gun is hot enough to extrude glue, so we don't try to run the motor before it's hot enough. It's pretty simple. Basically, you hook up to your positive voltage here, you go through a resistor value to divide it. Uh, kind of depends on what this value is. These are usually 10K or 100K. And at this point, you go to your ADC, so it can sense the analog voltage at that point. And the other end goes to ground, so basically, you know, depending on the temperature of this, this voltage will go higher or lower. Then what you do is you usually find a table online based off the thermistor value of, you know, 10K or 100K, and that'll tell you what the ADC equals in degrees. It's, you know, a calculation that's usually already been figured out for you, so just find it online and use it. Finding the tiny surface mount part you just dropped? Ooh. Not easy. Quickly finding the latest technology, thousands of in-stock parts, services, and solutions on the Element 14 store? Now that's easier. Discover all of the ways we're building an easier experience at element14.com forward slash evolution. All right, let's put this glue stick in. Man, I think my spring might be a little too tight, actually. Oh man, that is really... Oh, really tight. Let me see if I can. Oh, the LED shows us uh, what the temperature is. So if it's red, it means it's heating up. If it if it's blue, it means go. I guess. The wires are still a mess, but I have the trigger in place. Uh, I've. Now I rewired it to use the Hall Effect sensor. I also changed the code because the range is a little different than what the potentiometer was using. I also increased the maximum speed. I've noticed what happens is uh, if you extrude it too quickly, uh, it works, but it also loses its heat. So you can, you can push out a lot of glue, but then it'll start to slow down because the heat will be you know, transferred onto the glue that it, you've extruded, not in the barrel. All right, so let's just get a little bit in there. So we can do a slow, we can do a little bead of glue. And we can also extrude a lot of glue. Oh, <laughs> more glue than I have. 
So we'll feed another one in. Okay, now it mates up. I also reduced how much it, it uh, retracts because it makes it a little hard to, you know, install the glue. So kind of the concept is, you know, you have a continuous glue width, unless you pull the trigger too hard like I just did. Uh, so yeah, you can basically continuously, you know, if you're making like some sort of art project or cloth, you could just lay down a continuous bead over the entire project. It's kind of like holding your foot on a gas pedal. Well, an older car back when they didn't have, you know, all the fancy computers. Now I'm gonna do a demonstration where I'm gonna dump out all of the heat. And if you watch the LED right now, it's blue, which means we're at temperature. It'll start to flicker uh, purple when we are not at temperature. Yeah. See, I've lost too much temperature because I was going too fast. But I mean, I think I'll let, I'll let the glue do that. You know, if you want to, if you choose to go too fast, that's fine. Just know that you're going to see, starting to lose heat there. It should still extrude. Nope. All right. We, we did too much and we lost too much heat, so now we have to wait for it to turn blue. This area definitely gets warm, uh, but you know, really no more so than the outside of a normal glue gun gets. I mean, see, I'm not screaming in agony or anything. So a new glue stick comes in, we push it up to the previous one, and then we continue. Oh, too bad the glue wasn't conductive. We can make a circuit with it. For those really hard to reach jobs. Uh, yeah, size-wise, it's really not that much bigger than a small glue gun, which is pretty cool. I can tell right now one thing I would probably do different is uh, have this extend out more, kind of, a, kind of, kind of like a ant eater snout, you know. Put the glue out further. Of course, you had to put the motor out further there, so there's probably other things you want to change. But you know, basically, we're just kind of proving if this can be done. So far, so good. As far as uh, yeah, actually, another thing is to actually see if it's going to drip. Oh, I just put my hand in some hot glue. Okay, let's extrude some glue. Stop extruding the glue. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's wait one minute. Um, I've just been standing here for a couple minutes waiting for it to drip, and it hasn't yet. So maybe that retraction actually does a good job. We've tested all of the parts for the hot glue gun. Now we're going to put them together in a smaller way. So what I'm basically doing here is desoldering everything and then rearranging it in a compact form. I have to make sure that I keep all my connections accurate and I don't, you know, wire something incorrectly. I'll put the motor control stuff at the bottom of the motor so it kind of fits in the tube shape. I'll put the microcontroller at the back of the glue stick or it'll be out of the way and I can have the light sticking straight up. So hopefully we make this kind of into a compact package which kind of resembles what a final product might look like. The moment we've all been waiting for. The reveal of the great glue gun. <gasps> this puppy can answer all your dreams and prayers and wishes about glue guns. But how does this compare to a regular glue gun? Well, frankly, Allison, regular glue guns don't compare. Check this out. Wow, it didn't drip at all. I know, right? Saving you cents upon cents in glue costs per year. How can I get my hands on one of these? Well, normally a glue gun like this would cost upwards of $3 million. But with advances in technology, we've brought that price down to five VC payments of $19.95. The telemarketing amount that never changes, even with inflation. Wow, you know, you can also register to win this project at element14.com forward slash TVHS. That's right. So enter today for your chance to win this or many other great prizes related to the show. And what do we have coming up next week, Ben? In our next episode, we're taking a viewer suggestion to build an anti-pickpocket wallet. If someone pulls it out, wee, 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 it makes an alarm. So we'll see you then. Stay glued to those screens. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs>